We've counted down to the new year. But the time for celebrating is long gone. Now it's time to work. We're keeping score. Tallying up the wins. Climbing up the rankings. It's a numbers game. This is when it really counts. 2011 conference tip-off starts now. to ESPN News coverage of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy as part of conference tip-off. It's Big 12 conference action as the Nebraska Cornhuskers face the third-ranked Kansas Jayhawks from Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. Sean Farnham, a former standout at UCLA. I'm Dan McLaughlin, and welcome to college basketball. Welcome to one of the great settings of college basketball, Allen Fieldhouse. This team has not lost in 68 consecutive games at home. How about your keys to the game? What has to happen for Nebraska to pull off an upset? Well, I think first for Nebraska, they need to get back in transition. That's a no. But the key to the game for Nebraska is point production. They need to rebound the basketball and limit the number of paint touches for the Morris brothers down low. That's the biggest key for the Cornhuskers and Doc Sadler. For Kansas, it's a very simple one. They have to make shots. Now, they shoot a very high percentage as a team, but a lot of that is coming in the paint. So Nebraska's going to focus on taking away the Jayhawks' interior presence. That means their perimeter guy have to knock down shots. Now, take a look at Star Watch in this one. Tony McRae has just absolutely elevated his game at the start of conference play. They switched positions. He's now a versatile four, which looks to take you off the dribble. His point production has doubled. For Marcus Morris, what can you say? He's coming off a career-high game, 33 points, 13 rebounds. He can do it all. He's the best overall player on this team. Let's take a look at your starting lineups. Nebraska 13 and 3 this year, 1 and 1 in conference play. We'll highlight number 21, Jorge Brian Diaz, a 6'11 sophomore for Puerto Rico. Last year in two games against KU, he averaged 18 points. Meanwhile, on the other side, this could be a potential national champion. We're talking about number three, the Kansas Jayhawks, and everyone talking about number 32, Josh Selby, the 6'2 freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, McDonald's All-American. He is Mr. Excitement. Well, the one thing about Selby that you have to remember, this is basically early December for him. He joined them in the middle of December, so as a freshman, he's still just finding his way at the Division One level. So Kansas... A team that many predict to win the national championship gets Nebraska. And this is a series that dates back all the way to 1900. But yet, with Nebraska going to the Big Ten next year, all that changes. And Bill Self has seen his buddy Doc Sadler on the other side for a number of years. Bill Self, eighth year at Kansas. His winning percentage at home, 95% here in Lawrence. On the other side, Doc Sadler, his fifth season with Nebraska. He was at Arkansas, Fort Smith, two years at UTEP, and now with the Cornhuskers. The Cornhuskers will come out in their red uniforms with white trim, the road uniforms, and KU will be in their traditional home whites with blue trim. And looking at home winning streaks, the longest in Division I, KU at 68, then Duke at 29, and Kentucky at 27. This is your first time being here. You didn't have a chance to play here, but now as a broadcaster, you get the sense of why this place is so special. During my collegiate career, obviously, Poly Pavilion, one of the unique environments in college basketball. Cameron Indoor, we took on the Blue, Blue, Devil, Blue Devils. This environment has been special since we walked in last night for Nebraska's practice. Mark Whitehead, Darren George, and Jeb Hartness are officials tonight. Nebraska, for whatever reason, 
They are changing a couple of the jerseys. It's Caleb Walker who wears number 25 and Brandon Richardson the junior who wears number three. It'll be Markeith Morris jumping against Diaz. Contrasting strengths. One is defense in Nebraska, the best field goal percentage on D. Kansas, the best on offense. And KU wins the opening tip. Tyshawn Taylor leads this offense, leads their team in assists. He has the basketball. This is Selby. To Reed, who's a hard nosed player. They want to go inside. Morris, too strong. Diaz, the rebound. Lance Jeter really makes things go and their top three point shooter now in talking with the coaching staff in Nebraska a lot of this that motion at the top of the key and extended possessions for the Cornhuskers and one of the things that's very key is watch the play offensively they want to attract the Morris brothers away from the hoop and try to draw some fouls shot clock is at 10 McCray from the baseline short Knocked out of bounds. It stays with the Huskers in a fresh 35. You see the, the emphasis right there for Nebraska to try to find McCray. Utilize him off the bounce, and the guys have got to collapse and attack the glass. It's sold out once again here at Allen Fieldhouse. Knocked out of bounds, and that'll be off the hands of Diaz. And back to the Jayhawks. Last game for Nebraska was a loss to Mizzou. They open up their conference play on the road, 77-69. And snapped an 11-game winning streak from the baseline. Too strong. Diaz the rebound. Good activity on the defensive end of the floor for the Cornhuskers in their first two possessions. Showing on screens, they collapse him back and rotate. Near steal by Selby, and he knocks it out of bounds. Very quick, he wears number 32, you see there for the Jayhawks. Kansas does such a great job pressuring the wings. Nebraska has to be very sure with the ball. Look for them to utilize some back cuts against the wing pressure. Nebraska has not won in Lawrence since 1999. They've lost 15 straight. McCray, and we'll go the other way. Offensive foul. You look at KU and what they've had to go through this year with Selby, the early suspension. You look at Bill Self there. They started out 16 0. They had a very tough game on the road at Iowa State. There's the alley oop to Selby, and they throw it out of bounds. They also, right before that game on the ninth last weekend, overtime at Michigan they have played tight games recently and that's one of the concerns for coach self is putting teams away you know you look at the the, the scoring differential plus 24 for them on the season but it's those tight games that has him concerned as they're heading into Big 12 play here's Jeter spinning against Taylor lost it Norris has got it outlets to Reed here's Reed all the way and leans in and he'll shoot two those are the type of turnovers, though, that will frustrate Doc Sadler. There's good and bad turnovers when you're playing Kansas. A good turnover against Kansas is when the ball is out of bounds and allows you to set up your defense. You don't want to turn it over in your half court that allows them to get out and transition where they're so deadly. Tyrell Reed out of Burlington, Kansas, 93% free throw shooter. Doc Sadler, one of the characters of college basketball, no doubt. They love what Reed, who just hit the two free throws, brings to this team. He's the son of a coach. He's already been accepted into KU's physical therapy school. Bright kid. Richardson and Nebraska break the pressure. We're tied up at two. Great job handling the pressure with some great composure and attacking the rim. And almost stolen. Great effort that sideline near the Nebraska side. And the young man is slow to get up. That's Brandon Richardson. Richardson, they're returning 
score, top score from a year ago. Watch a quick ball reversal straight up the sideline, then hit the man in the middle. That's pitcher perfect for Nebraska. That's how you want to handle the pressure. You attack down the sideline. Once you get that guy flashing across the middle, hit him and look. Don't be afraid of the shot blockers. Go after him. Selby inbounds to Tyshawn Taylor. Double on Morris, kicks it to the corner. Selby inside the arc. Four to KU. Selby matched up with Richardson. Diaz finds Richardson. Open look for three. No good. McCray, strong rebound inside, and he's fouled. That's a beautiful offensive possession for Nebraska. You get the ball down low. One of the things about Nebraska is their bigs really can distribute the basketball. More often than not, their offense will actually run through the post. They get you to collapse, and they'll kick out the shooters. And that time, McCray able to work the offensive glass and draw the foul. Now, normally you hear about Tommy John surgery, and that's with a baseball player, but that's what Tony McCray had a year ago, and it was on his left elbow. Missed most of last season, and he's coming off 17 against Mizzou the other night. Tied up at four. On the year, he's shooting 45%, but in Big 12 play in his first two games, 58%. So the change of position has been good. They had him at the small forward, uh, but he's been able to utilize his quickness at the power forward position now. Taylor trying to feed it inside. Really a lazy pass, and taken away there by Jeter. Selby has the loose basketball for KU. It's a two on one. Watch out here. Taylor takes it in. Out. Great help side defense allowed the Cornhuskers to get the ball, but that's one of those bad turnovers. Bad turnovers for Nebraska. You can't afford to turn it over because when they attack, it's pick your poison time. McCray tried to implement a hard foul to not allow the end one. But it's got to be a little bit harder. Taylor able to finish through the contact. Brandon Ubel checks in for Nebraska for the first time. McCray will have a seat. And Taylor is 73% free throw shooter at the line. A two year starter for Bill Self. Short. Morris a rebound. Ball fake. And stripped away. And then the foul by Taylor on Richardson. When you look at the unbeatens that are left right now in college basketball, is it realistic to say that a team could run the table this day and age? No, especially not this year, because I think there's a lot of good teams, but there's not a great team. With Kyrie Irving going down, maybe North, uh, maybe Duke would have had a chance with North Carolina and Virginia Tech kind of struggling in the ACC, but this conference is too loaded for Kansas to go undefeated all season long. Off the hands of Diaz, the second turnover by Nebraska here early on. 6-4 KU. Bill Self, one of the best in the business. Eighth year at Kansas, won a national championship. Six straight Big 12 regular season titles. Bill Self will tell you that he thinks this team is good. He, doesn't, he never uses the word great when describing his team right now. Morris, double team, dribbles out of it. Selby for three. Short, Diaz a rebound. Matter of fact, Bill Self was telling me the other day, and I asked him, I said, how would you compare this team to your national championship team? And he said, that team would go into the locker room and look at their stats on defense. He said, right now, we just don't have that commitment on the defensive side that that team had. Jeter, deep three. Read the rebound. To further that this morning, he told me this careless play is one of my concerns, and it's not necessarily just the turnovers. It's the shot selection. It's the focus at the defensive end of the floor. They have won 68 straight here at Allen Fieldhouse as we step aside. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy. The no wait, no hassle way to a great morning.
15 27 to go first half 6 4 KU leading Nebraska let's go inside the play and you look inside the play you got to have awareness of the paint and an excellent job look at all the numbers watch Jeter though slide on over he's the only guy in the help side that could possibly get the high low dump down and he does it that collapsing and team awareness in the paint is going to be very key as this game progresses for Nebraska. During the timeout, they honor the 1952 national champions. The Kansas Jayhawks are just sit, uh, situated right behind the current Jayhawks bench. You talk about some tradition. Woo. It's unbelievable. You feel it. You walk around the building. You see the pitchers. It's basketball. At Starbucks this morning, they were talking to me about basketball. Everybody in this town knows what's going on at KU Hoops. Thomas Robinson has checked in for the first time for Kansas. He wears zero and a travel on Selby. Well, Nebraska trying to improve on a disappointing year a season ago. They were 15 and 18, 2 and 14 last in the Big 12. Expectations a lot higher though this year. They were a young team a season ago. They do return some experience. And they're a much taller team this year, and that's so key to Doc Sadler and the system that he runs. He's got to have some size, and he's got to have guys that can play out of the paint. That's a tough shot, fading away. Baranek, the 6'4 senior on the Nebraska. Nebraska. He's a former walk-on that transferred in from a Division II school and has earned a scholarship for Doc Sadler. He's played very well for him. He's been starting the last couple of games. Went back to the bench so Richardson could get the start today. Reed for three. No good. Diaz has it for Nebraska. And the big question for KU coming into this season, no Sharon Collins, Xavier Henry, Cole Aldridge, they all left. How do you replace that kind of talent? You reload. It's what Kansas does on a consistent basis with guys like this. He is a high flyer. This is Selby. And he is fouled. And I could read Bill Self's lips saying, what's he doing? And it looked like that he really slowed up in about mid-court. Let's take a look. Yeah, he kind of staggered here a little bit and then just kind of lacked the explosion that we're used to seeing out of him. An odd play for Josh Selby. Selby, an 86% free throw shooter. His debut, he had 21 against USC, including the game winning three. And I asked him the other day, I said, you're out of Baltimore, and here you are right in the middle of America at uh, Lawrence, Kansas. Why would you pick here? And he said, well, wait until you experience what is going to happen tonight. It was a game about a week ago, and the crowd was going crazy. The atmosphere was tremendous, and he said, that's why I decided to come play for Bill Self. Kansas can recruit anywhere in the country, get the best players in the country on a year-in, year-out basis. Your Selby steps into the shot, no good. Missed it. And the big man for Nebraska, and I mean big, 300 pounder, kept it alive and got it into the hands of Baranek. And made it doing a nice job there getting his hands up. He's a 6'11, 300 pound junior. Look at that body inside. He is from Brazil. And a push. Well, you mentioned the height. Uh, Nebraska being a difference two years ago they were the shortest team in America not anymore I uh, go 610 610 610 they got they got a lineup of guys they can run out there it, it, you know you, you look at what they they can do what are the strengths of this team well playing through their bigs they're good interior passers they can shoot the ball with a nice touch Doc Sadler told me before the game tonight when we were talking to him he said look we're getting good looks offensively last year we hit looks this year we're not so far. But so far, they're good, good start today. Defensively, rebounding the basketball at both ends of the floor. Morning stars on the floor, as well as Elijah Johnson and Mario Little, a 6'6 senior from Chicago, has missed considerable time. Number 23 for KU this year. Some off the court issues obviously have been resolved. He had to take the necessary steps, not only with law enforcement, but also by the coaching staff and this athletic department, and he has fulfilled his requirements. Here's Reed to Johnson for three. Nebraska's done a good job not giving KU too many second chance opportunities here early on. 
and limiting transition buckets. And when they have gotten transition looks, they foul. The big man gets it to drop. Two-time junior college All-American. And Nebraska leads it by three. The scary thing when you look at Almeida is that he lost 30 pounds in the offseason. And there he is, his read is going right at him. Two elite college wrestling programs hit the mat Sunday night on ESPNU. Seventh ranked Iowa takes on second ranked Oklahoma State, the Cowboys. College wrestling on the U Sunday, 5.30 Eastern. Samuel Reed at the line, already two of two from the free throw line. Reed with two points in seven minutes so far, and that's his first miss, two of three. Substitution. And Taylor back in for the Jayhawks. Let's see if Nebraska can break the press with the accuracy that they did the first time that Kansas brought this on. Hit out of bounds. Stays with Nebraska. 13.08 to play here in our first half. Sean Farnham, Dan McLaughlin, Allen Fieldhouse, and Lawrence, Kansas. Sold out again today. And Nebraska will get the timeout. Great pressure by Kansas. Doc Sadler even changed up their press break on the first time. They went with just the two guards. Then they had to bring everybody else back in to try to shake things up a little bit. Well, if you're uh, Nebraska, you're on the road here and you're up by two, you have to be very pleased, Doc Sadler, with this start. I, I think you really do have to be pleased with the focus and attention to detail, specifically on the glass at both ends of the court. You know, Kansas is a much more athletic team. But Nebraska has done it collectively at the defensive end. They're swarming the post, they're rebounding the basketball, and then they're slowing the game down with their offensive tempo, which is exactly what Doc Sadler would want his team to do. And they're handling the environment. And how do you handle an environment where your opponents won 68 straight? You do it with your staple, defense. A lot of teams try to come in, they, they, you can't outscore, you've got to get stops. And Nebraska leads the country in opponent field goal percentage at 35%. Richardson with it. Gives it up. The three is no good. The tip is, though, the big man again. Almeida. And right now it's Kansas that's not locking out. It's Kansas that's not finishing off their possessions. And that'll bring the Morris brothers quickly back into this game. Morningstar with it inside. Thomas Robinson against Almeida. Kicks it out. 15 on the shot clock. Taylor. Nice save by Morningstar. Johnson. The Robinson. Pump fake left elbow. Too strong. And the rebound to Jones. Nobody inside for Kansas on that position. Even to get an offensive rebound. Jones deflected loose on the floor saved by Taylor Elijah Johnson to little pulls up very patient here in Nebraska Gallegos Short. Robinson the rebound. Outlets to Taylor. Great double team. Taylor looking for help. Has it. Johnson. It was a great double team, but the passing out of it was better by Kansas. A quick rotation along the baseline. It's spotted up, ready to knock it down. Good luck. And the finish after the feed by Almeida. Ubel was there, the sophomore from Overland Park, Kansas. And we were told that a lot of family and friends for Ubel would be here. 
not too far away, Overland Park. Travel by Taylor. Bunch of new faces coming in when we come back. The big three in the corner for KU. And coming up, a salute to Martin Luther King Jr. Next on ESPNU. It was a while before I realized that famous speech he made, I Have a Dream. And years later, I, I heard it all over again, and it meant more to me then than it did when it happened. And uh, what he was really saying is, my dream is very simple, and that's let's love one another. That's all it was. He said, don't look at the, the color of my skin. He said, I want you to look at the, my character. He said, and uh, I can love you, and you can love me at the same time. Wake up, everybody. Wake up, everybody. Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education, landmark decision of the United States Supreme Court, declared state laws establishing separate public schools for black and white students. Unconstitutional, the decision was handed down the 17th of May, 1954. 1951, it was a class action suit filed against the Board of Education of the city of Topeka, Kansas. The plaintiffs were 13 Topeka parents on behalf of their children. The ruling, segregation of students in public schools violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. A good one here in the Big 12, Nebraska and KU. And Nebraska, a little bit surprising right now to see them with this lead. It's 16-13. Almeida's playing very well at the offensive end. And speaking of the offensive end, KU just seems to be a little bit out of sync, whether they're out of sync or Nebraska's causing it. I think you give the credit to Nebraska at this point in time. This is one of the best defensive teams in the country. Field goal percentage-wise, they are number one. Reed for three. Ties it up at 16. And that's why the keys to the game are making shots. They're going to try to really take away the paint production for the guys on the perimeter. Johnson, Reed, they've got to stretch the defense and hit them. Shuffle up the feet with 14 on the shot clock and now under 10 minutes to play. First half tied up at 16, Nebraska and Kansas. Wasted dribbles right there for you, Bell. If you're going to put the ball on the floor, you better go somewhere with it. Don't just sit there and massage it in the block. He's lucky the guard didn't come down and just take it away from him. Morningstar now running the point. Selby is back in, the freshman, and he gets it to Reed. Selby inside. Goes to Markeith Morris. Double team there. And they throw it away. Good defense again by the Cornhuskers. The key to bringing a double team is the quickness in the rotation. And Nebraska's doing an excellent job. Watch on the catch. Richardson is there on the turn. There is no way for Morris to go. He tries to throw over the top, but it creates a turnover. That's great defensive coaching by Nebraska and execution by Richardson. Caleb Walker with it. Diaz, tough shot. Almeida again. The big man. Paying dividends at the offensive end. Second chance opportunities. Morris, MVP, hits a three. Yeah, he's got to close out on that though. I wonder if Bo Pelini is sizing up Almeida and saying, you know what, let's get this guy a helmet shoulder pads. See if he wants to go at it in the fall. He's got the basketball here. And he walked. Monday morning, ESPNU delivers the Spalding Hoop Hall Classic, featuring some of the top high school teams in the country. Westchester and Christ the King, Bishop Gorman, St. Patrick. ESPN Rise High School Basketball Showcase on the U Monday. Morning star in and out.
Jeter to Almeida. How do you see 6'11", 300 doing a dribble handoff? Look at this. Richardson, little floater, and that will go against KU. And Morris, the fans don't like that. Number three, KU, getting a test here at home. Big 12 conference on ESPNU and a one-point lead for the Jayhawks. ESPNU's coverage of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy, part of conference tip-off in its 1918 KU over Nebraska. February 3rd, 2007, number eight Texas A&M at number six KU. Back in 07, and AC Law, the lefty could really stroke it. Hits the last five points for the Aggies, including the go-ahead three over Brandon Rush. And the Aggies beat KU 69-66, the last home loss for the Jayhawks. Well, think about Bill Self, you mentioned his winning percentage here at home. 123 and six in Allen Fieldhouse. Last game they were tested on the road at Iowa State. Held on for an 84-79 win, and you see that winning streak for KU at 68, the start of play today. When Coach walked off the floor after shoot around this morning, he looked at me and said, it's a special place, Sean. It's a special place. Absolutely. Last year, his team went 33-3. They lost to Northern Iowa out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Ali for Rokmanesh was unconscious that afternoon. Richardson at the line for Nebraska. Brandon Richardson, the top returning scorer from a year ago. And he's battled some injuries in the uh, early stages of the season, just came back from a knee injury where he sprained, and he's got the brace on that right knee. And if he gets his feet underneath him, he's one of the better perimeter shooters on Nebraska. So any points you're getting out of him right now is a good thing. A great on-ball defensive player. He's got Josh Selby standing right in front of him. And Selby lost it, then committed the foul. Right on cue, the quick hands of Richardson. And Selby, the freshman, will have a seat. Taylor back in for Kansas. Reed is the leading scorer for KU. He's got six points. Richardson with his two makes with four for Nebraska. 2019 in favor of the Cornhuskers. Sean Farnham, the former UCLA standout, Dan McLaughlin with you from Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence. Fading away and hitting the shot, Diaz. You know, I mentioned that he had 18 and two games against Kansas last year. Remember, that's Cole Aldrich. He was hooked up with an outstanding player, and he had scored Cole in both those games. Morris for three. Notice how many possessions though are one and done for Kansas right now. Nebraska collectively bogs going in. Everybody's getting to the defensive glass. Gene with a crossover. Fade away. Got it. And a timeout taken by Bill Self. It's a great timeout because his team right now is reeling a little bit. They're struggling at the defensive end of the floor and allowing Nebraska to feel very comfortable, too comfortable in their half court sets. Nebraska is dictating the tempo of this game, not Kansas. And again, they lead the country in opponent field goal percentage at 35%. And 12 to 16 that they've played this year have been held under 60 points. That's what they're doing to KU today. Well, and they're doing it in a variety of ways, bringing double team from behind. Watch Richardson collapse here and force the turnover. Those turnovers are giving opportunities for Nebraska. And then just 1v1. Let's go after it. Selby, you're the best one-on-one -on -one player on Kansas roster. Richardson says, I'm right here standing in front of you, and I'm not going anywhere. It's a mindset, and it is a demeanor that Doc Sadler develops with his team. And they're playing with the best focus I've seen on the defensive end all season out of the Cornhuskers so far. And Sean, on the other side, Nebraska is shooting 59% here in the first half. And Kansas has turned it over seven times. Taylor. Johnson. The battle inside, but they're going to get a hold. And that'll go against Brandon Richardson, the junior from L.A. Beautiful recognition, though, right away. When you've got Markeith Morris down on the block with Richardson behind him trying to play post defense, you get the ball to him as quick as possible. Nothing Richardson can do but foul in that situation. At the line, shooting a one and one is Markeith Morris. Markeith Morris is 68 percent free throw shooter averaging 13 a game oh. 
even though that uh, KU checks in with a record of 16 and 0, you talk to folks around this program, it's just uh, not a real comfortable 16 and 0. If that makes sense, a lot of tight games, and they feel that defensively they're just not there where they need to be. They played one ranked opponent on their schedule at the time of the game, and it was Memphis. Now Memphis is no longer nationally ranked; they're 12 and 4. So there are some question marks. Diaz, no good. Ubel couldn't get the tip to go down. And here is Johnson. Reed inside to Morris, looking for help. Deflected out to Taylor. Great hands defensively, though. Morris inside. And an offensive foul. That last possession defensively, just unbelievable. Watch how it unfolds. In transition, you get back defensively, you stop them, you force them to play from the outside. On the throw in, quick double team. Respond immediately, quick hands to get the deflection. And then right back down, close out, charge. Beautiful. You Doesn't bell. get much better. Brings it up for Nebraska. Six minutes to go in our first half of play. Jeter with it. Jeter, the runner, got it. He is at his best when he has a lane and eyesight going towards the hoop. Morris double teamed again, finds Johnson. Open look for three. And another miss. KU is three of nine from behind the arc. Nebraska looking for their first three, but they've gone inside, had great success just like that. Diaz, and another timeout taken by Kansas. It is tough to quiet a crowd here. And they're not quiet yet, but Nebraska is executing with great precision at both ends, whether it's team defense or great offense. Watch Jeter. Dribble drive, he's got two guys paying attention to him on the outside, and then slowly be patient. The defense is sagging up. The help side defense is out of position, and Brian Diaz able to finish. A lot of easy looks. How close are the looks that Nebraska's getting? And the remaining unbeatens in Division I men's college basketball. Ohio State against Penn State. KU, we've got it right here. Syracuse has won 67-52 over Cincinnati and San Diego State at New Mexico. Last undefeated team, the 76 Hoosiers, 32-0. Well, in San Diego State going down to the pit. New Mexico taking on Steve Alford's squad. New Mexico perfect 9-0 at home. And all time, San Diego is just 7-25 and in that building. If, if there's a team on that list, I think you'd have to look at that would have a chance to run the table. It probably would be San Diego State. They're not playing in the Big 12. They're not playing in the Big East. Yeah, but the Mountain West Conference is the fourth strongest conference yep. in the country this year with a great team like BYU and Jimmy Fredette. Morning Star. There's Taylor. Almost threw it away. Reed in the lane. That's no good. The struggles continue, but Reed gets it. Backs it out. Fresh 35. Here's Reed. points from Nebraska in the paint. Oh, the bigger number is just the two for Kansas. Diaz inside. Morris the rebound. KU wants to run. Here's Taylor. Morning star wide open. No second chance for KU. That last possession for Nebraska. Brian Diaz rushed things a little bit. Should have gathered himself. He had time to go up. Diaz lost it. ESPN, the magazine, calls this the loudest arena in all the country.
Nebraska by five. Our score 28-23. Nebraska trying to pull off an upset with 3.54 to go in our first half of play. Two elite college wrestling programs hit the mat Sunday evening on the U. Seventh ranked Iowa. The Hawkeyes take on second ranked Oklahoma State, the Cowboys. College wrestling on ESPNU Sunday at 5.30 Eastern. ESPNU. John Farnham, the former standout at UCLA. Dan McLaughlin with you. We're at Allen Fieldhouse here in Lawrence, Kansas, and Nebraska's done just a terrific job here in the first half. Well, it goes back to the keys to the game for me is finding paint production, and they've done an amazing job getting the ball down low offensively. 14 points in the paint. They're doing a great job at both ends of the floor on the glass. And conversely, as Bill Self told me today, we got to make shots against this Nebraska defense because they're not going to let us score points inside. Only two points in the paint for Kansas. Some of their strengths being taken away by Nebraska. And Kansas has only shot 35% on the other side. Nebraska at 55%. This is Little from the baseline. Short, tipped. Nebraska's got it. Lance Jeter with it. Leads and assists and steals. Also leads the Big 12 in assist to turnover ratio. So a guy that can really handle the basketball and handle this pressure well. I don't know about you, but I thought the big man has been a difference so far. Young man that wears number 32 for Nebraska, Almeida. Big size. He's got the offensive glass twice already. He's doing a good job distributing the basketball. And guarding Morris here. Reed has had the hot hand. But one and done on almost every possession for Kansas. Baranek with that rebound is third in the first half. Nebraska by five with just about two and a half to play. Almeida lost it. They've got to show it up again. The one thing I would say to criticize Nebraska a little bit is their post players are, are putting the ball down but not going anywhere. Taylor to Morris. Offensive foul again. They have done such a great job. Defensive rotation. Help side defense. If you're going to beat Kansas, you got to have help side defense. Beautiful job. Just sliding over in position. Not being afraid to take the contact on your chest. Markeith Morris, that's his third personal. So he'll have a seed for quite some time. And that could be a big difference. You talked about the inside game for Nebraska. Having the edge so far in the first half. Well, Morris now out with three fouls. Well, the best way to attack Kansas is to try to get the Morris brothers in foul trouble. Get them out of the game, and then you guys will feel even that much more confident at the offensive end. This is Caleb Walker. Eubel leans in. Contact, no foul. Taylor is open. He's got it against Jeter. Nice finish. Comes a crowd. Walker, wild shot, got it, and then a foul underneath with 11 on the shot clock and 122 to play in our first half. Nebraska in the one and one and at, and at the line Caleb Walker the junior out of Hutchison Kansas the former junior college All-American not a great look offensively but once again it's the hustle and the effort from Nebraska that is creating opportunities too strong Morris the rebound a three could tie it. Very careless with the basketball, knocked out of bounds, off the hands of Richardson. How many times have we seen Richardson get his hands on the ball here in the first half? A great job defensively, being active in the passing lanes. Selby the inbound for Kansas, only three points. Morning 
Star with it. One minute to play in our first half and a steal again by Richardson. Nice hands. Richardson inside and blocked by Morning Star. Fans react on the Jumbotron. They just saw the Morning Star the flexion. He is from right here in Lawrence, Kansas. Number 12 for KU. Guarding the basketball. Richardson and a foul. Coming up on Sports Center U halftime report, Kevin Connors and Miles Simon. Number 12 Missouri battles Texas A&M, the Aggies. Texas Tech visits Manhattan. Chris Joseph injury update. And a lot of news in the Big 12 when you think about what's happening right now with Frank Martin and Kansas State, the preseason pick to win the Big 12, and one of their players is saying goodbye. Espria has left the program. Espria, they said it's a mutual decision, but when you lose a starter, a guy that started 13 of 16 games for you, you've had the issues with Kelly and Poland, and now you lost two games in a row in Big 12 play. Frank Martin's going to have to roll up his sleeves and pull back on the, the reins a little bit and try to settle this thing down. 30-25. Mark Turgeon is the head coach at Texas A&M with great ties to this program here at Kansas. Selby for three. Higher oh, first half for the freshman. The yeah. Doc Sadler. Nebraska could play for the final shot. For Doc Sadler, he has to be so pleased with his effort of his guys at both ends of the floor, the way they've executed. Collective team strength is how they could possibly win a game on the road against Kansas. Number four. Cheater. Richardson for three. No good. Folks, this will be the first time this year that Kansas has trailed at the half. Halftime score, Nebraska 30, Kansas 25. Let's join Kevin Connors and Miles Simon back in the studio with Sports Center U. Halftime report. All right, Dan, thanks very much. Well, looky here, the 68-game home win streak for Kansas in jeopardy right now. Welcome into the Sports Center U Halftime Report. Kevin Connors, national champion, Miles Simon right here. How has Nebraska controlled the tempo this entire first half? They've done it with defense. One thing, they're swarming the Kansas Jayhawks in the paint. Anytime the Morris brothers or Thomas Robinson touches the ball in the block area, there's a double team coming. Nebraska has been getting their hands up, getting deflections on balls. And then on the other end, they've been going inside themselves to Almeida and Diaz and getting easy buckets and so they really controlled the tempo. They're the number one field goal percentage defense team in the country and they're showing why right now. 15 straight wins for Kansas in this series. We'll see what is to happen in the second half. Meantime, earlier this week, number one Duke was chopped down by Florida State. Why rebounding against Virginia has been anything but easy. We're going to show you highlights from ACC action coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report. Tuesday, it's a College Hoops twin bill on ESPNU. First at 7, SEC foes tangle as junior guard Scotty Hobson leads the Volunteers against Georgia and their high-flying two-guard Travis Leslie. Then at 9, wrap up the evening in the Big East as DePaul looks to take the shine off a scrappy Golden Eagle squad and lethal junior college transfer Jay Crowder. Ooh, he is on some tear. The action tips off Tuesday at 7 on ESPNU, the home court of College Hoops. Well, I think the main thing for, for me with Martin Luther King is that he, uh, I know he's expressed it as having a dream, but you know, he's a very motivated person who changed the course of history. And he did it because of his, of his will. You know, to me, he, he had great will. And that will was felt by millions of people. Wake up, everybody. Wake up, everybody. 
Lance Jeter, three of five from the field, six points. Nebraska is out rebounding Kansas 20 to 10 at the half. Big reason why they lead by five at the intermission. Ken Connors, Miles Simon, Missouri, Texas A&M, number 12 versus number 13. Marcus Denman can hurt you in a lot of ways, Miles. Yeah, the fastest 40 minutes in basketball, Mizzou Tigers. Denman coming off a big 27-point game against Nebraska last time out. Knocked down the three, and then that one to Lawrence Bowers, and then David Lobeau. I mean, how do you explain this? <laughs> just pure luck, man. Sometimes it's just rolling for you in the right way. It's the uh, home roll, and then in transition, the Aggies, B.J. Holmes, spot up and knocked down. Four-point Missouri lead over on ESPN2. All right, Texas Tech against Frank Martin and Kansas State, who's always motivated. How about Jacob Pullen dishing a Jamar Samuels finish? Yeah, Jacob Pullen, a preseason All-American, hasn't really lived up to the hype yet this year, but they got Curtis Kelly back after a six-game suspension today. Boy, a lot of shots falling down. That was Will Spradling, the tough layup. And then second, third effort by the Wildcats. Jamar Samuels fortuitous here. Yeah, well, one thing we know about K-State, they're big and long inside. If they can score the basketball, they can continue to rise up the rankings. K-State up big. All right, Duke and Virginia, that could be the future. Kyrie Irving and Austin Rivers, high school star, is headed to Duke. Virginia, the hot start, though. A same sin, the putback. Virginia led by two. Duke, though, with tremendous firepower in the backcourt. Yeah, Duke, one of the obviously one of the best teams in the country, but that is the only three that they've hit so far in the first half. Nolan Smith knocked it down, and then Virginia hanging around behind Mustafa Farrakhan. Farrakhan really picking up the slack for Mike Scott, who was a 15 and 10 guy out with an ankle surgery for Virginia, Virginia Cavaliers. In Cameron Indoor, Virginia six point lead at the break. Cincinnati and Syracuse Orange looking to stay unbeaten, but they lost Chris Joseph on a scary play in the first half. He was evaluated with a head injury, did not return. His status is unknown for Monday's big game against Pitt, part of Big Monday on ESPN. There was a Fab Mello sighting. <laughs> there hasn't been very many of them this year, Kevin, but there with the impressive inside play. And then a monster game from Rick Jackson again. Rick Jackson, maybe the Big East player of the year right now. Fourth in the country and rebounding. That's a big statement right there. Well, Terrell Reed with nine points in the first half for Kansas, but the Jayhawks and their big home win streak in jeopardy down five at the half. Welcome into the Sports Center. You back to ESPN News coverage of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy as part of conference tip off. It's Big 12 Conference action. Nebraska and third ranked KU from Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. And these fans are stunned right now. Halftime, it's 30 25. Sean Farnham, Dan McLaughlin back with you. And uh, there's no doubt about it. This has been a, a shocking start to this game in the first half. You just spoke to Bill Self. What did he say? Well, he, he challenged his team at the break. You know, and I talked to Coach Hall. I said, what's, what's going on? How do you rally the troops here in the second half? He said, first thing, we got to get back on the glass. They are getting beat minus 12 at the break for Kansas. That's unacceptable. If you're the Jayhawks, they need to get that taken care of business. Points in the paint, he's almost resigned to the fact that they're not going to get him against Nebraska's defense. The defense of Nebraska has been the key, though, overall in the first half, in particular, Brandon Richardson. So dynamic in his effort today, diving over the scorer's table. That play, although it did not result in a turnover, gave him the energy and fueled his teammates. This time, bringing the double team. And then 1v1, go ahead and make a play. And that is what he is so good at doing, and he did it time and time again in the first half. And basically what that brings is empty possessions for Kansas, and that leads to opportunities for the Cornhuskers. And how about Doc Sadler? How pleased was he with that first half? He, he was thrilled with the effort of his team, but was quick to say, look, 20 minutes doesn't win you anything. 40 minutes does. And McCray traveled, and then Morris threw him. And remember earlier this season Marcus Morris had an issue with an elbow and that actually resulted in a suspension but no foul no technical and Kansas gets it back and it's a turnover by Nebraska Nebraska in the first half turned it over 11 times KU 11 Kansas only shot 33 percent in the first half. This is Reed who had one of the better halves for KU at nine points two or four inside the arc and that's out of bounds. Bill Self immediately will go to his bench. Taking care of the basketball is at a premium. You turn it over 11 times in the first half. You get a stop. You got to get a good possession. They didn't. 
Remember, Marquise Morris, when you talk about trying to get inside, if you're Kansas, he's playing with three fouls. So he starts the second half on the bench for the Jayhawks. And Marcus Morris quickly to the bench as well. I think that's just to settle him down for the grab of McCray. Jeter pulls up inside the arc short. Diaz the rebound. Fresh 35, but why not just take it from the free throw line? But Robinson picks up the miss. McCray should have put it on the floor, taken one bounce and made it a little bit easier and got himself in a better rhythm there. Elijah Johnson with it. They'll go in the corner. Here is Selby. And he got it stripped. The quick hands by Walker. Walker all the way in. Can't finish. Ball loose. Here comes KU. Selby. Nice heads up play by Jeter to have the steal and then keep it alive. That's just great hustle. Great intensity by Lance Jeter to get on back in transition, sliding down in an ill-advised pass, really, by Josh Selby. And Morningstar checks in as Bill Self is going with some experience here to try to calm things down just a little bit. Just underway here in the second half, if you're just joining us. Allen Fieldhouse on ESPNU. It's Kansas and Nebraska. KU undefeated at 16-0 and number three in the land. And yet they trail by five. McCray inside, blocked by Morris, and that's been one of the positives for either Morris twin. Those two guys haven't done an awful lot today. No, averaging over 30 points per game. Look at what they've done the last two. Today, he's struggling offensively. And really not having an impact like they have defensively as well. Altering shots. Nebraska has been very comfortable in the paint. This is Diaz inside. No, Johnson. The rebound. Nebraska was getting those to fall in the first half. Johnson travels. Bill Self, all he can do is cover his eyes and look at his guys. You can just see right now they're trying to quicken up the pace, but they themselves can't handle this pace. At least not right now. No, they have struggled to handle the pace of this game because of Nebraska's intensity at the defensive end. Pressure will force you into turnovers. This is more about Nebraska forcing the turnovers than it is Kansas right now. Now, Kansas has got to settle it down. I would, I would anticipate at some point in time you slow it down yourself and really try to establish something. Play through the post a little bit, even if you're not going to score. Jeter, who's been very calm at the point, and a nice job for Nebraska. McCray for three, got it. It's an eight-point lead on the road for Nebraska here in Kansas. Robinson calling for it against Diaz. It'll be on the floor with 17-18 to play here in our second half. Triple penetration will break down a defense. As Jeter drives, the hesitation just slightly by Marcus Morris frees up McCray from the outside. That's the versatility of a guy that used to be a small forward now playing the power forward position. Johnson, and again a turnover. Nebraska wants to run. Here's Jeter, and fouled by Morningstar. The other thing the turnovers do is they allow Nebraska to get transition looks, runouts, where Kansas can't set up its defense. So not only are you hurting yourself at the offensive end, but you're compounding it because you're giving them runout opportunities and having a foul. The partner, here we have five possessions by KU here in the second half. Five turnovers. This for the biggest lead of the day. It's at nine points for Nebraska. At one point, they had an eight-point lead in the first half, and now it's nine here in the second half. What Dan, you mentioned as we went to break, it was the first time Kansas has been down all year long. How do you respond from adversity? How do you respond mentally when, you've been when you haven't really been challenged like this all season? Double-digit lead for Nebraska. Star gets it back behind his back in the lane. Reed for three. Reed with 
12 points to lead Kansas. Cheater, nice look inside. Cheater out to McCray to answer with a three of his own, and he does. Big three-point shot by McCray, and he's talking a lot right now. He's got to watch himself close to getting the technical there. Taylor, the floater. Robinson, the rebound. And a foul inside with 16.09 to go. Tony McCray. Stepping up, hitting some big shots. But the officiating crew is having to talk to him right now to settle him down as he was chippy down the floor after the made three. This is a 10 point lead. And this deficit, the largest of the season. And you were asking, uh, you know, how do you respond being down at the half? Well, now how do you respond with the largest deficit this season that Kansas has faced? And Doc Sadler's using a teaching moment right now for Tony McRae. A block but a foul. And that sends Marcus Morris to the line. See, Doc Sadler's experience his teaching point here is he knows, regardless of the size of the lead right now, you have to be smart. You can't give him an inch. You can't give him a technical and give him life. Marcus because Morris the Jayhawks will pounce two. on that if you do. Morris, not a very good free throw shooter, only 61%. Averages 17 a game to go along with seven rebounds, and you see only three points today. Forward pressure and Jeter gets the timeout. Oh, they're going to say that he didn't get the timeout, and it's a five second call. Both teams started to head to the bench. One official gave him the timeout, and the other two did not. So they bring the teams back out after that. Taylor with it. Pick from Robinson out to Morningstar. There's Morris. The block by Diaz, but got it. Goaltending. That could be a huge turn in this game. They do not get the timeout. Turns into a possession for KU, and they turn that into two points. Finally get the ball down low. Game. They finally got it down low. They got to do a lot more of that here in the second. Eight thirty-one. Nebraska leading number three KU with 15.55 to play and Doc Sadler during the timeout just trying to calm his kids down. Well you have to settle things down when you start to feel like your team's a little rattled and I think that's what we saw not only on that last offensive position but defensively when you felt the pressure you get the five second call you got to be smart and you got to make sure that you're executing because that's, that's what got you the lead. It wasn't trying to make sensational plays. It was making a simple play. At one point, it was a 10-point lead for Nebraska. They lead it 38-31. Dan McLaughlin, Sean Farnham, the former standout at UCLA. Trying to go to Diaz and a turnover by Nebraska. Well, we'll see that that's that's an issue right there where you're forcing things a little bit. You want to get the ball down low, yes, but did you have the best angle? Well, that's a, that's got to be a pretty precise pass if you're going to complete it. Morris muscling in up and under. Oh, what a move! And notice where Kansas has got the ball in the last couple of possessions is down low on the block. They have broken down the perimeter pressure of Nebraska. And they're 15 on the shot clock. Jeter with it. 
to Diaz. No good. And the finish inside for Caleb Walker. Robinson. Bill Self said they had to make shots. Maybe they got to make layups because they've done a nice job. See the double team doesn't collapse there. Walker didn't hold his position. That's what allowed Morris to make the spin and get the reverse layup this time. No double team and Robinson able to finish. In the first half, that double team was coming a lot quicker, Dan. Robinson only a 48% free throw shooter. Nebraska wants to run. Here's Jeter. Now he'll pull it back wisely. Oh, wide open. The big man for the flush. Almeida was there. And he's had a nice ball game inside against Kansas. That's his sixth point. He was there and nobody else was. Nobody in a white jersey at least. Taylor for three. That's too strong. I made a tip it up to Reed. Reed with it. Taylor gives it up. Morning star for three. Here's Richardson all the way in. Too strong. Almeida the tip and a whistle for the foul. Monday morning ESPNU delivers the Spalding Hoopball Classic featuring some of the top high school teams in the country. Westchester Country Day from North Carolina faces Christ the King from New York. And at 1 Eastern, Bishop Gorman from Nevada takes on St. Patrick out of New York. ESPN Rise High School Basketball Showcase on the U Monday. One more is Sitz. The other one in. Markeith is in for Marcus. Taylor all the way in can't finish Markeith Morris playing with three fouls Morningstar keeps it alive to Reed Timeout taken by Nebraska after the remarkable play to keep it alive for Kansas. Taylor the miss. Morris tried to save it. Morningstar did. And then Reed the big three. 42-41. What a remarkable play this one. To Reed for the three. I think there's a home court advantage here in uh, Lawrence. 68 straight, the longest in the nation. And it's this crowd right now that is helping spark the energy for Kansas. That was the first possession in this game where Kansas' work rate as a team was better than Nebraska's. Nebraska just moments ago had a lead of 10, and now it is cut to one. For those of you that were watching Texas A&M over Missouri in overtime, 
Along with Sean Farnham, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Welcome in to Allen Fieldhouse here in Lawrence, Kansas. Number three in the land, undefeated. The Jayhawks on the ropes against Nebraska. With just over 12 minutes to play. Shot clock is at three. Jeter, tough shot, short. McCray the rebound. That was a big rebound because that was not a great offensive possession. That's too strong. And another offensive board and a foul by Little. Well, it just goes back to effort and coach self at halftime when he spoke to me is we're getting beat on the glass. Two offensive rebounds. You allow your opponent to continue to get looks. Good things are going to happen for him. But Nebraska in that last possession, Dan, a lot of movement on the outside. No entry block, no entry passes to the block, which is so key to this offense. Off the inbound. That's no good. And Kansas again able to keep it alive. The hustle by Marquise Morris. Morris for the lead. Another timeout, Huskers. Great interior passing by the Kansas Jayhawks. The double teams that were coming so crisp and so clean in the first half for the Cornhuskers, they've slowed down. And Kansas has been able to exploit it by attacking the paint. Their last four made buckets have all come inside the blue paint area. And they've done a nice job playing inside out. And this was the great hustle play that made it and electrified the crowd. And Doc Sadler's having to settle down his guys. Look at that pass, though. That's beautiful execution down low. It's understanding and reading where your teammates are going to be. Well, slow start for Kansas in the second half at last nine possessions. You see what they've done to the field goals. And now they have a lead of one. But Taylor is limping, but seems to be all right. Number 10 for KU. Good ball fake, open look for three. Knocked out of bounds, back to Kansas. Lawrence has come alive. The Jayhawks down by 10 just moments ago. They now lead it by one on ESPNU. Tuesday, it's a College Hoops twin bill on ESPNU. First at seven, SEC foes tangle as junior guard Scotty Hobson leads the volunteers against Georgia and their high-flying two-guard Travis Leslie. Then at nine, wrap up the evening in the Big East as DePaul looks to take the shine off a scrappy Golden Eagle squad and lethal junior college transfer Jay Crowder. Ooh, he is on some tear. The action tips off Tuesday at seven on ESPNU, the home court of College Hoops. ESPN, the home court of college hoops, and the U.S. college basketball covered with two new shows every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. 6.30 Eastern College Basketball Whip Around takes you to the sites of the games around the country to give you all the latest news. At 11 Eastern, catch college basketball live for all the news and highlights every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night on ESPNU. Great way to know what's going on around the country. I had an opportunity to call in on my Thursday night game. Little Maramont, Portland, talk about the best three-point shooting team in the country in the Pilots. They ended up winning in double overtime. How about this ball game here? Kansas has gotten back into it. How have they done it? Well, they've done it with a lot of effort, but mainly Nebraska has been unable to sustain their quick trapping down low, and that has allowed Kansas to spin off, create opportunities down low on the block and get the defense to kind of start collapsing in. And yeah, as Coach Self said, you got to hit some shots, and they've hit some big three-pointers. Kansas, seven threes today. And they're now shooting 44%. Nebraska's dropped under 40. They're at 36. Little, double team, trying to find help. He's got it. The hot hand read. And off the mark. Cheater the rebound. 
Another thing to make sure we point out, Tony McRae hits the three, gets close to getting technical, goes to the bench, and that's when Kansas started getting fired up and has made this push. Great point. Jeter goes inside to McRae. McRae and a foul. A couple bodies got tied up. That'll go against Tyshawn Taylor. 10.33 to play. And McRae heads to the line. Only a 60% free throw shooter out of Missouri City, Texas. Tied up at 43. Reed will have a seat. 15 points in 24 minutes for Bill Self's club. Baranek will have a seat as well. And Brandon Richardson will check in for McCray. Nope, we will check in for Jeter. We'll give him a little breather. Too strong. And a nice clear of the glass that time by Kansas. Both the Morris twins. Marquise is 6'10, Marcus listed at 6'9. Zone defense in Kansas has struggled against the zone, against Michigan, and even at a period of time the other night against Iowa State. Little for three. No good. And Doc Sadler doesn't play a whole lot of zone defense. No, he doesn't like to do that. He'd rather play man to man. This will be interesting to see if Kansas can make that adjustment, hit shots against that zone. It was just a weekend ago against Michigan, as you mentioned, they really struggled. Too strong. Morning Star the rebound. Those are shots in the first half that were falling down with a pretty consistent rate for Nebraska. And a foul. McCray. Diaz checks back in for Nebraska. McCray will check out. That's four on McCray. It was nine points in 12 minutes, but four fouls in those 12 minutes. They stay in the 2-3 zone. They're going to let Taylor shoot it. They're daring him to shoot it. Morris flashed in the middle, knocked out of bounds, and back to Nebraska. Great job by Almeida, though, coming up from that center position of the 2-3 zone to contest the shot at the free throw line. That's the soft spot that every team tries to get it to. As soon as you see the 2-3, attack that middle area. Get out of bounds by Little. With as much pressure as Kansas is applying right now, you've got to find some pressure releases. That means your bigs might have to flash and call for it and then play off of them by rubbing. Just over nine minutes to play. The backdoor cut, couldn't finish. The tip, that's no good. Still loose. Diaz got it. Nebraska back on top. And that was a great pressure release by Jones on the outside with the back cut and a beautiful rebound made up. That set up everything. Nebraska again back in the zone. And you wonder how much longer Bill Self can keep Reed on the, the bench. Reed has been the guy that in many ways shot them back in the game. Start. Good look. They keep it alive. Morris with three on the shot clock. His brother picks up the miss and finishes. Marcus Morris. Diaz nearly stripped. Still looking for help. And it's off of Taylor with 16 on the shot clock. And Reed checks back in, this time for Morningstar. 
When you're talking about 68 wins in a row in this building, there is a sense of pride with this Kansas Jayhawk roster, and you're starting to see it from guys like Marcus Morris. Diaz put it on the floor, and they're going to call a hold on Taylor. Taylor collapses. And that looks pretty clean. Little out. And checking in for the Jayhawks, Thomas Robinson. Diaz working against Robinson. Block keeps it alive. Robinson, another block. Doc Sather wanted to foul, didn't get it. There's an open look. Three. Short. Robinson. Fouled and caught it. <laughs> Thomas Robinson wanted to dunk this. He gets fouled. And now he has a chance to complete the three-point play when we come back. Good ball game here. 47-45 on the U. ESPN News exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy. The no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. Number three in the land, Kansas here at Allen Fieldhouse with a two point lead over Nebraska, 742 to play. February 3rd of 2007, it was number eight, Texas AM at the time against at that time number six KU and remember the Aggies beat Kansas 69 66 that was the last home loss for the Jayhawks AC law scored the Aggies last five including the go ahead three over Brandon Rush with 20 seconds to go and now it's Doc Sadler and Nebraska trying to pull off what would be a huge upset in college basketball. I mean, that right, right there is a, a team that's in, at the time, you know, top 10 in the country. And right. you see the win streak at 68 for KU. Well, and again, it, when you have 68 straight wins, it's, it's more than just the environment. It, it becomes and takes on a culture and a life of its own. And these players all of a sudden have responded with a great effort. Marcus Morris. Now you're seeing Robinson get on the offensive glass, making plays. Completes a three-point play. Three-point lead as you get a look at the stat track at the bottom portion of your screen. Diaz blocked. Okay, who wants to run? Alley -oop. And Jeter is there. Jeter all the way in and count it. Like a great boxer, you got to be able to counter punch. Kansas gets the block. They try for the spectacular play at the offensive end of the floor. And it leads to a run out for Nebraska. Great counter punch. Golden opportunity to try to electrify the crowd. And instead, the missed opportunity leads to a great chance for Nebraska to get an N1 opportunity. Jeter with 10 points. Make it 11. Tied up at 48. What a ball game, huh? Taylor back to Robinson. And Nebraska is back in that familiar man-to-man. -man. Here's an alley -oop. Thomas Robinson. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Jeter, Diaz underneath and finishes. We're tied at 50. What a nice response by Nebraska. Tyshawn Taylor with it. Gets a pick from Marquise Morris. Taylor, the floater. 
Almeida the block. Here come the Huskers, and that's a travel. A travel by Richardson. The pick and roll is one of the great plays in all of college basketball if you can execute it right. Inside the play, the stop, the freeze, the throw, and the finish. The defensive rotations that time, you've got to show up big, either that or flatten out back, and Almeida got caught in no man's land. And Robinson with that flush now with seven points. Kansas shooting 41%, Nebraska 36%. Both teams have turned it over 15 times. Under six to go. Tied up at 50. Different look defensively at times for Nebraska here in the second half. This is Morris. Oh! No one stopped him. KU by two. Diaz couldn't finish. Lewis. And Morris has it. Robinson battling inside. They've got a mismatch if they see it. Robinson. The plus. The rim has been getting a workout here in the second half by the Kansas Jayhawks. First, no help side to defense. Markeith with a great pin and seal down low creates the space. Then Thomas Robinson exploding up to the rim. Yeah, you talk about swagger. That's the swagger of the Jayhawks here in the second half. And that's why they've got themselves a four-point lead. 5-14 to go. Robinson another chance to complete a three-point play. They're playing angry right now. <laughs> They're playing angry. It's a perfect way to describe it. Lead stays at four. Morris knocked it out of the hands of Almeida. Back to Nebraska. 5.13 to go. You get the feeling it's a big possession for Nebraska before the next TV timeout. There's no question. This crowd is pumped. The Jayhawks are amped. Nebraska has got to settle it down right here and get a good possession. They need to get a touch down low on the block and play out of it on this possession. You can't just do it all on the perimeter. Going to stay with the Huskers. 22 on the shot clock, under five minutes to go. 4.59 to play. One of the biggest offensive weapons the Cornhuskers have is the passing ability of their bigs. And in the second half, we haven't seen them playing through the post enough and throwing it back out. Nice round of applause for Robinson. He checks out. Little back in for KU. Walker will inbound right in front of his own bench. 22 on the shot clock. Fifteen on the shot clock. McCray. Almeida. May have pushed off. Got away with it. Big bucket. Well, that's what I was talking about. You've got to get touches on the block. That time, no double team comes, and Almeida's big enough where he can bounce guys off of him. Careless. And it's saved. Reed. Alley -oop. And Doc Sadler is beside himself, pointing at the line on the sideline, thinking that was out. You gotta play the whistle though if you're the Cornhuskers. Four point lead. McCray, too strong. Almeida keeps it alive. Jeter. Three up from the corner. First of the 14 on the shot clock. They really haven't done that all afternoon. Two-three zone for the Cornhuskers. They've been getting sliced up in their man-to-man. -man. 
Reed. Ten on the shot clock. Morningstar gives it up. Little, nice look to Morris. Lead at six. Timeout, Nebraska. Two fifty six to go, and Doc Sadler calls a timeout with his team down by six. Great execution, though, in that last possession by the Kansas Jayhawks against the 2 3 zone. What you're going to see is the weak side flash create the opportunity. Freeze it on the catch right here. Go ahead, roll it out. Freeze it right here. You're going to force the big man to step on up here. That allows the space for Morris to slide on in and get to the rim. And the weak side defensive players, they flattened out because they're concerned about the cross court pass. Beautiful execution that time by the Jayhawks. They have won 68 straight here at Allen Fieldhouse and getting a test this afternoon from Nebraska. The series that began back in 1900. This will be a foul on Reed. Led down the stretch of a good one this afternoon here on ESPNU. Kansas at home. They've gotten back in the game with high percentage shots like that. 58-52. ESPN News coverage of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy as a part of conference tip off. Big 12 basketball here, Kansas and Nebraska. And the dunks are plenty here in the second half. They have done such a nice job executing their half court set. But again, it gets just down to being aggressive. It gets down to being a little bit cocky, maybe having a little bit of swagger about you. And the Jayhawks have done that. And they have made the hustle plays when it matters most. And those have been some back-breaking dunks by Kansas. So there you get a look at Kansas shooting 50% here in the second half, and much of that because of the dunks that we have seen. Conversely, look at what Nebraska has done. Just 28% shooting here in the second half, and that's because the intensity of Kansas has picked up. And, and to be honest, though, Nebraska's missed some easy looks around the hook that they finished in the first. That's right. Off the timeout, Jones hits the three and fouled. That is a designed play by Doc Sadler coming out of the timeout. The execution, the run baseline, the double screen. You can't go over the top. Shooting one is the Jones. What a huge possession. Lead at two now for KU. Under two and a half to go. Morningstar with it. This is middle. 15 on the shot clock. Morningstar in the lane. Finds an open little. Inside the arc. Short. Oh! What a follow! Morris was there! You've got to put a body on Marcus Morris. Marcus with 14 and a kick. In the first half, Nebraska cleaned up their glass with great efficiency. It's why they were plus 12 in that category in the first half. In the second half, too much of that. Following the ball in the air, not making contact with Marcus Morris. Diaz was falling out of bounds and was able to save it. Now they want to get it in the hands of Jeter, their floor leader, 15 on the shot clock. Jeter hesitates. Fans wanted to travel. We've got four on the shot clock. Jeter, deep three, short, no good. Nebraska with it. 
And we'll get a foul on Little. Thirty-five hoop games from Friday to Monday on ESPN Family and Networks on this Martin Luther King weekend, including seven high school games. Monday treat for you: six games live on ESPN News, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. So at the line, Ashante Jones, the sophomore shooting 70%, hits the free throw. Nebraska now 12 of 14 from the free throw line. And on the other side, KU at 50%, 7 of 14. This to cut the lead to two. Brandon Richardson back in for the Huskers. 1.32 to play. Every time it looks like Kansas is starting to seize the momentum of this game, Nebraska has been able to answer back. They lost their lead. Can they regain it? It's a minute 30 left. It comes down to intensity at the defensive end if you're the Cornhuskers. And timeout taken by Bill Self. So 60 to 58. Kansas with 29 on the shot clock. Sean Farnham, Dan McLaughlin with you, and uh, it's been a treat here this afternoon. Let's talk about both huddles. First of all, KU, what are they trying to accomplish out of this timeout? They're trying to accomplish what Coach Self has been preaching over the last couple of weeks here, finishing off your opponent. That's the key right now. They have got to do what Kansas Jayhawk fans expect them to do, and that's to put the throttle down and finish this game. For Nebraska, it's very simple, as I was just saying. It starts at the defensive end of the floor. Force Kansas to take a contested look, but you have got to clean up your glass. Give yourself an opportunity to win the game. So it's a two-point lead for Kansas with 125 to go. Again, here at home, they have won 68 consecutive home court wins. Reed will inbound and again 29 on the shot clock 125 to play. Coming up next Austin P Tennessee State. Morris and a whistle that will stop playing with 110 to go. And they got. You bell the sophomore out of Overland Park, Kansas, with the foul, so that sends Marcus Morris to the line. And if Morris is a free throw shooter that's under 70%. Alameda is back in. Good substitution by bringing Almeida back in. That's to sure up the miss. And that's what Doc Sadler told him as he ran in. Reading his lips, he said, Go get me a rebound. The preseason All American at the line. Missed it. Nebraska's got it. Morris with 14 here this afternoon. A great job by Almeida blocking out Marquis. Nebraska has one timeout remaining. Kansas with two. And a whistle, a foul. And, and that is just a, a mental lapse by Marquis Morris. Coach Self talked about it and said, hey, look, we're going to show sometimes. We're going to pressure and trap off the screen but that was not the moment to do it the last thing you want to do when you have a two point lead is to put somebody at the free throw line fouling them at the mid court line and with two timeouts remaining Bill Self will take one here for KU Richardson six point sixty percent free throw shooter his reaction. Less than pleased. Well, here you go. You head to the free throw line and you start thinking about all the scenarios that could take place. The two makes, tie games, setting up defense, all those things come into play. Certainly, and if you're Doc Sadler right now, you're looking and saying, you're going to make both these free throws defensively. Here's what we're going to do. We've got to get one more stop, and that'll assure us a possession at the opposite end. Now, if you're Kansas, you got to first of all talk about what you do and do not want to do defensively, and you got to remind them we don't want to foul at the midcourt line. Let's make them make shots. 
offensively execute, get the ball down low. Remaining unbeatens in Division I men's college basketball, Ohio State against Penn State. That's coming up. And then Syracuse already won against Cincinnati. And San Diego State at New Mexico, as you talked about earlier, very tough to win there. 1976, Bobby Knight, last team to do it, Indiana 32-0. Brandon Richardson at the line. He is 4-4 four four from the free throw line today. Six points. Short. That's a pressure free throw. Lead at two. Difference about 16 seconds, game clock and shot clock. Reed with it. Down to seven on the shot clock. Morris with it. He's fouled. And he'll head to the line. 21.6 seconds to go. Brandon Ubell whistled for the foul. And that is a two-shot foul. So this is huge here. Marcus Morris at the line can make it two possession with two makes. He's one of three at the free throw line. 32 minutes, 14 points. He's got it. First half, three points. Second half, much better for Marcus Morris. 12 points, 15 total in the game, and a double double with his 10 rebounds. Hit them both. Nebraska does have one timeout remaining. Doc Sadler will take it right now. 62 58, 18.3 to go. At one point, Nebraska, folks, was up by 10 here in the second half on the road at KU. But momentum-type plays that can change a game, the high-percentage shots, the dunks, and we saw that numerous times here in the second half. Oh, well, it, it's the swagger of the program, the aggressiveness, the anger, the frustration maybe from the first half. But they started attacking the rim as the band is playing the song All We Do Is Win. And Marcus Morris... Thomas Robinson, they're playing with the confidence and the swagger you'd expect of the number three team in the country. And these shots weren't just made buckets. They were momentum-changing, back-breaking buckets against Nebraska. Now let's talk about what both huddles are going through right now. There you see pictured Bill Self. Well, for Bill Self, it's, hey, guys, don't foul. Get a stop. Uh, you stay in front of your man. You don't let him get a lane to the basket because you have to realize two possession game, 18.3 seconds left. Doc Sadler's telling his guys on the inbound pass, let's attack the rim and try to get something, get fouled, stop the clock. So you have to be aware of that if you're Kansas. But if you're Doc Sadler, you can't waste a lot of time. No, it's, it's a catch and go. It's a catch and start going towards the hoop. Try to draw a foul, get a finish and end one opportunity. Then you've got to foul quickly on the inbounds pass if you don't get the steal. But you've got to pressure full court on any made shot here by Nebraska. Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. Where the Jayhawks have won 68 consecutive home wins. Reed will contest the inbound. Jeter with it. Down to 15. They've got to hurry up. Jeter with it. Jeter on the way in. And he finishes. Two-point lead. The coach is going to call for the foul on the catch if they don't get the steal. Morning start to inbound. Immediately the foul. And that's the last guy you want to foul. Tyrell Reed came in as a 93% free throw shooter. So great execution by Kansas, realizing that they were going to get fouled. You free up your best free throw shooter and you get him to the line. He has only missed three free throws all season. One of those today. He's three of four from the free throw line. Reed with 15 points and four threes in his 32 minutes of play. Oh, he missed it. 
And no matter what happens here with 10.4 left, Nebraska's going to have a chance. Checking in for Jay Mox, Mario Little. Checking in for Nebraska, Brandon Hugo. And Jorge Brian Diaz. With the lineup out on the floor, if you're looking for a three, it's got to be either Jones or McCray for the Cornhuskers. Don't forget about Jeter. He has had 15 coming into play, too. Their leader. So it's a three point lead. And Kansas will take their final time out. And Doc Sadler said, oh, good. I agree. It gives him an opportunity to set up his play. 10.4, so plenty of time. Kansas by.